Next up, the series went on an American road trip starting in Pikes Peak. It's at altitude, so a lot of the European runners went in advance to acclimatize. It's also home of the Manitou Incline, a challenge of over 2,700 steps. The current record holder is Joseph Gray, and if I was him, I wouldn't be very pleased that the world's best trail runners have all come with enough time to potentially take down my record. The incline is a really steep climb in Manitou Spring, and there, there is a lot of people doing it like all year long. And uh, I never had the opportunity to do this climb, so this year I, I was a bit before the race, so I decided to attempt the incline record. So. Not too flat, eh? but I like it. I think it's a good way to test the legs before Pikes Peak Ascent. Hey, my name is Remy Bonnet. I live in Switzerland and I am running for Salomon. Yes, it's possible to beat this record if you get up and do it at 6 a.m. instead of 10 a.m. There is no way you can beat Joe Gray in 68 degree condition. Remy Bonnet is one of the best climbers in the world, but it's actually been some time since he's really been performing well, last winning a podium in 2018 at Zagama. Recently, however, he broke the vertical kilometer world record, the fastest time to run up a thousand meters. So he comes here to Pikes Peak and the Manitou Incline as a favorite to do well. How much was that? Seventeen thirty five. I think my confidence after breaking the incline record was quite high and I knew that uh, all was green to, to push hard during Pikes Peak and in my mind I think I was yeah, I was already winning the race like after the incline record. Obviously I underestimated Remy Bonet. We don't get to see that every day. I can typically do the incline in 35 or 37 minutes and I'm almost never passed by anyone. To see somebody doing it in 1725 is quite amazing. The two American races represent the last chance for athletes to score points that count towards the final. Someone like Remy, who's had a slow start, really needs to do well here to still be in the runnings for the overall title. And it's a similar story in the women. Ninka may have won Zagama, but that's the only race she's done so far this season, so she needs to do well in both of these races. Maud's returning, but also there's a new challenger on the scene. Sophia Lockley won Strander, and she's yet to race either of them. So this is the first opportunity to have the three most exciting female runners all going head to head. My name is Sophia Lockley. I'm 22 years old, and I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and run for Solomon. I grew up skiing. I was probably like two the first time I was on skis, mainly because both of my parents skied. My dad's from Norway, so they taught us, me and my siblings, very young. Um, and so I've been skiing forever, and then I've always liked the running aspect of my training for skiing, but I'd never really thought about doing it competitively. And then there were a few trail races around where I was training, so I hopped in those, and they went really well, and I decided to pursue it more. Yeah, I was really, that was like the scariest race for me that I've ever done. And yeah, I mean, it was really fun and a little bit scarring, but <laughs> it was a cool race to finish for sure. And then winning was just like unreal. So I looked a little bit at the race in Norway. Euh, J'étais très contente de ne pas être allée parce que quand j'ai vu euh, les conditions météo et la, la piste comme elle était, euh, ce n'était vraiment pas une course pour moi. Et euh, j'ai été euh, impressionnée par la performance de Sofia. Oui, à ce point, j'avais une meilleure idée de qui allait être là. Et j'étais vraiment excitée parce que j'étais enfin allée faire la course Nienke et Maud. J'avais entendu beaucoup sur eux. Et donc j'étais vraiment excitée pour voir comment je vais pretty excited to see how I'd match up against them. Pour la course Pikes Peak, je pense que bah, toutes les meilleures sont là. 
Et je me réjouis de voir euh, Ninke, ce qu'elle peut faire, euh, Sofia, Sarah aussi, même si c'est que de la montée. Euh, y a vraiment le, le, le niveau est, est monté euh, cette année. I came to United States three weeks before the race because I live in 100 meters above the sea. I don't have experience with altitude, so I try to train in that altitude and be ready for the, the race. Yeah, it's a big challenge for us today, so I'm a little bit nervous. But I did really well in Stranda. But it's his only race so far this season, so he needs to do well in the final two. And it seems a lot of athletes are in a similar position. They've been picking and choosing their races, but left it too late. So everyone's competing in both of the races. When I planned the travel to USA, I knew that the race was for me, like it was only up. And I, I proved many times that I am one of the best climbers in the circuit. So I prepared well with the altitude at home. And uh, I was, in my mind, I was going for the win, not for the second place. Are you checking on your watch if you are gonna do the record of the ascent or not? Yeah, I look the watch like at bar camp. I see that I was in the record time, so I try to to keep the pace like the same pace because I knew that if I do the same first and the same uh, second part was uh, good for the record. I think when you see the elevation, the distance, and the time, it's not tough, but uh, the altitude make it really tough. If you look like the times, the first split in the middle, I was in the record time, but then from bar camp to the summit, he keep like pushing uh, the same pace at the normal altitude. And if you are not used to the altitude, it's impossible. Even if you are the best athlete in the world. Seven minutes behind. Your place, 12, 12. You are 12 actually. After the start line, I knew I have to keep the pace in the front of the group because the entry to trail is very narrow and I, I couldn't keep the group pace and I was really mm, frustrated about it. But right now I, I couldn't run. Maybe I can um, stop, but it, it is my second race. So I have to finish because I need points to be higher in uh, general ranking, so I, I have to be in the in finish line. I don't know, maybe I had a bad day, maybe I trained too hard in that altitude, because I don't have too much experience, but I don't know. It's, maybe it's some different points influence that my performance in that day. I typically think I really like racing at altitude, but that was just a whole nother level. Like I live at altitude and for ski racing, I, I enjoy altitude racing, um, but I had, I didn't, so I didn't like change anything leading up to this, but this race was way higher than anything I had done. I was still in second, but Nyanka had long gone. I couldn't see her anymore. And then a, like, it wasn't too far into that section that I saw Mode a few like switchbacks down um, and she was really moving and I was like, yeah, she's probably gonna come right by me. And she did. Max Pic Ascent is the first race that I win during this season. So it was quite good for me because I, the last one I win was four years ago. So it was quite a long time without big win. So for the confidence, it's really good to have this one. After five races of intensity, finally a bit of time off for the road trip. And what do trail runners want? 
more trail running and some national parks. Is this the poster for next year, guys? Mm. I'm really happy to be here because it's my first time here. Also, my fiance Patricia, she is first time in America. We spent a lot of time with other athletes from different brands, but we are like big family. So we cook every day together, we run every day, we explore new places. When I started to run in the rally, my only objective was to travel and be here con otros atletas súper buenos. Me siento como demasiado privilegiada, en plan que no me lo merezco en plan. Joder. Tienes estas oportunidades en tu vida dos veces contadas y, pues no sé, me encanta poder estar aquí. Es un sueño. Honestly, the places we got to see in Moab, it's been, it, like it has been a dream because it's stuff that you sit there and especially when we're sitting there at sunrise at Delicate Arch and you're just like shit, this is this is the world we live in and this is incredible, but it's it's not just that I'm used to travelling by myself and I'm used to being in those places loving my own uh, company but also wishing I had someone to share it with and when you've got 40 people that you really appreciate having around you and are really cool people to share such special experiences with and yeah, it's been a, absolutely a dream. Hey! It's a picture perfect kind of world with you, world with you. It's a picture perfect kind of world with you, world with you. It's a picture perfect kind of world with you, world with you. It's a picture perfect. So we, we plan to do a road trip between the two races. I really enjoy it and and now it's time to focus again for the second race. I think for Flagstaff, Bart will be hungry because he did not expect to do like a race like in Pikes Peak. So he will be motivated to, to show that he's, he's here. And uh, there will be also like Danny will be strong, Manu will be strong. Maybe Francesco also, you never know with Francesco, but uh, I think it will be also strong for the race. So that will be a good battle with all the athletes. En cuanto a posiciones, está yendo muy bien porque Cegama fue una Cegama sin seco con un nivel de la leche, un tercer puesto con un tiempazo. Eh, después en, en Noruega eh, fue un segundo puesto y después en Sierra Recinal fue una locura de carrera. <laughs> me metí en la boca del lobo y me masticó, pero bien. Y nada, ahí conseguí que no creo que un 20 o un 21, pero lo sufrí muchísimo más que las anteriores. Flasta. Flasta no sé cómo ni, ni resumirlo, porque va a ser subir por un lado de la estación y bajar por el otro. Va a ser subir a piñón y bajar a... No me lo quiero ni imaginar, pero igual a 3.30 los últimos 15. El problema de, para mí en esta carrera que voy a tener que salir a muerte y llegar a muerte. Aquí no va a haber estrategia. Para mí no. Sí, me siento confiante, me siento que recupero. But also, I'm a little bit afraid because last week I had a bad race. And we will see tomorrow. Flagstaff was the last chance for athletes to score points. So everyone was competing, but none more so than Ali McLaughlin. She raced Pikes Peak as her first race in the series, coming fourth. And she'd need to get enough points to qualify with only two races counting. So Flagstaff was do or die. Good job, Ali. I'm Allie McLaughlin, and I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I run for On Running. I was injured during track a lot, and just injured in college a lot, um, in general, in cross country, too. So uh, after I got out, I took a season off, and I always wanted to do trails. To me, 
running is running, like whether it's on trails, road, track, or anything. I like it all. But um, there was this one race, the Pikes Peak Ascent, that is um, from the town I'm from. And I always wanted to do it, but I always was like, I'll do it when I graduate. And so it was like, it took a kind of a break from running and got healthy. And then the very next year I raced it and I won it. And um, and so ever since then, I realized there's this whole trail community. But yeah, I, I still would like to do maybe a road marathon or get back to the track, but trail will always be home. So cool. I went into flag more like I went into Norway where I, and the profile to me was like, oh, that's probably not gonna suit me super well. I knew there was gonna be climbing, but I heard a lot that there was a lot of downhill and really fast. And so that to me was not my strength. And so I wasn't really expecting to run with Nianke that race. And I was more uh, un or like unsure of how that result would end up. Uh, survive the climb and then absolutely bang the downhill. Full gas. Full gas. <laughs> I've got nothing to lose by having a massive crack because with the points I'm currently on, um, I do have a shot. Obviously, that would be the bare minimum I would need, and that would be very lucky if that got me in. So I kind of need 12th or better um, if I want to qualify within the top 30. So for me, it's a case of uh, have a crack, like do or die in a way. Like in the, at the end of the day, a 16th position to me is going to mean the same thing as a 40th position. into the race and Remy Bonet already has a gap from the rest of the group. How is this possible after racing Pikes Peak last week? Coming to the final race, Nink is running for a third win and all of them overmoored. Sophia Lockley is looking to see whether she can jump into the podium positions and Ali's looking to see if she's got enough points to make it on the plane to the finals. Sarah Alonso is sat pretty and it wouldn't surprise me if she just relaxes all the way to the finish line. Remy's looking to get his second and move up to first overall in the rankings. Bart needs to do well to get himself into the top 10 and also make sure he has enough points to go to the finals. Whereas Manu needs to do well to return himself into the podium positions. Yeah, the climb was, uh, it was really steep, so I didn't run a lot. And uh, at the last part of the climb, Sophia overtook me. She was really going fast. As soon as we got to the steep, like going up the steep climbs, I noticed that I was gaining on her. And so I wasn't like, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, I don't think I should be passing her. I was kind of assuming that she would come back. I was in fourth behind Maud, Sophia, and Nenke. And um, like, even though it was tough, it felt good at the same time. So I kind of was like, all right, just, just follow them. <laughs> Fuck altitude. Never again? Never again. Uh, well, the day of the day has been complicated. Uf, los ritmos eran para mí fuera de, de mi estatus, de lo que yo puedo hacer. Eh, vamos a decir que los primeros seis se hicieron a menos de 4.15 o así, 4.30, aunque fueran en ascenso. Sí, es verdad, la pace fue realmente crazy porque Remy Bonnet se puso muy fuerte al principio. Intenté estar detrás de él, pero... Yeah, I really try to say the uh, message to the other that I was not tired from bike speak and that uh, I, I was here also to win that one. En la bajada, sé que como mucho puedo remontar hasta una quinta posición y no me estoy jugando nada porque la temporada la tengo hecha. Entonces, en toda la parte técnica, voy con cuidado después de haberme caído mucho durante toda la temporada. 
y empiezo la pista y digo, vale, ahora sí. Ya adelanto a Tabor, ya veo cerca a Dani y en un lugar súper tonto, que es donde más me molesta a mí, que resbalo. ¿Qué me hago daño? ¿Y yo qué, Sara? ¿Qué ha pasado? ¿Tú estás Here is the ice station. If you need something, go Sara. You are all together. Here, here. Do you need something? I can tell them. If you are hurting Sara, you should stop. Me levanto y sigo corriendo. Y me duele mucho, mucho. Miro, o sea, pienso en mi mente, no sé, ¿por qué me duele tanto? No me he torcido nada, no me he golpeado la rodilla. Y sigo intentándolo casi medio kilómetro más, porque nunca antes me he retirado por la organización, por respeto, por mí, por cabezona. Pero realmente me tengo que parar. No. ¡Ey! ¡Ey! ¡Come here! They will come here, Sarah. Yes. Oh, fuck. Come! They will come. I was feeling well now. Yeah. Pues ahí cuando está ensangrentada a tope, solo podía pensar de que qué mierda, porque estaba haciéndolo bien ahora. Pero realmente digo, wow. Estoy cojeando, ni no puedo ni apoyar la pierna, me duele a muerte y que a un mes para final voy al hospital y por favor, por favor que me digan que no es nada o que al menos pueda correr antes de la final porque quiero entrenar un poco. Y es que se lo era asfalto y alguna piedrita. Mala suerte. <risa> que justo la piedra iba ahí. Y he seguido corriendo y he dicho, ah, pues... No, Diana, ¿por qué te quejas tanto? Y pues no sé. Y de repente me paro y he dicho, wow, agujeraco. Venga, ven, corre. Sí, hombre. Ya, yeah, fuck, be careful. The, the the steep downhill, it's crazy, and this, this this was my problem last year as well as well, and I still notice I there's a lot of work needs to be done in the downhill. Yeah, so it was a lot of back and forth, which makes a race a race. I think um, you know there's some races everyone kind of just holds their position the whole time, um, but it was so cool. I went back and forth with Mod a little bit, and I end up catching Nanke and passing her on a really technical part, which kind of scared me in a way because I was like, oh, dang, I don't know if I should be <laughs> this far up. Like, I didn't want to blow up. Um, yeah, so then, and then I caught Sophia for a long, for a little while on the downhill. And uh, and we went through some aid stations and they, people were so excited because it was like one, two female, like together. <laughs> Maybe 5K left to go, um, which I didn't know there was 5K left. I thought it was really close. I, Nianke did pass me, um, and then like immediately after that, I just went face planted down. <laughs> I was pretty tired at this point, and so I was just trying to stay on my feet, which was a challenge at this point. La parte final de la carrera. Si os dijera lo que pienso de la parte final de la carrera, igual había que hacer un un corte porque me cagué en todo lo, lo, lo que podía ver por, por el dolor de, del flato y por el tipo de terreno que es, sin más. I think after Flagstaff I am first now in the ranking and with a lot of points in, it and in advance to the second. So that's cool for the final and I think I will be more than motivated to to yeah, keep, the, keep the lead until the, the end. Let me off the hook. I wanna get single in the sheets. 
Freaking did it. I cry because of happiness. <sighs> Today the race was really special for me because it was a, a race where it was like a, really a battle, and um, and in the end then I won. So it was it was really uh, it made me a bit emotional also because I won the three races and uh, I uh, was third at some point and I made it again to to become first. So I, it was special. <laughs> Most of the athletes today were battling for their place on the podium or their overall positions in the finals. Whereas one athlete was battling to be top 30 just for the possibility to actually be there. As it currently stands, 31, which is the worst spot, shit. You came out today and for how many seconds you didn't make it? 90, 90 seconds in the end. Yeah, I was catching her. I was quite a bit faster on the downhill I think, because um, she was further ahead on the uphill. She was ahead of Iris. So I was catching, but not, not fast enough in the end. So it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I know I'm one of so few in the world that get opportunities like this. I suppose for me, running, running is very emotional and it becomes super emotional at times because I have so many moments of going, shit, I was there. I never want to forget that I was there and that there are people still there. But now I'm here and I want to feel that for all it's worth because it's worth a damn lot to be here among so many amazing people. And the privilege of being here cannot be put into words, especially for someone like me that's been at the absolute opposite end of the spectrum, for sure, in life. Like, whew, I'm climbing mountains. Like, fuck, man. I never would have believed myself to be doing that. For the final, we went to Madeira, which is an island in the Atlantic, southwest of Portugal. Yeah, it's looking like rain every single day, and it's not like I won't race because of that, but I really like sunny, dry conditions. Ali surprised everyone and just flew out of the start line, way ahead of Inca. I had a good month of training, and I kind of wanted to just come in with a bang. We came back to the hotel after stage one and suddenly found out that Manu had been disqualified.